Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you as is usual. For this one we're continuing on with a series of Scottish beer reviews that I've been doing for you. So this is review number 29 of 34 in my Scottish Beer Month series. And for this one we're going to visit a brewery who have a little bit of controversy surrounding them. This is the Brewmeister Brewery who come from Keith in Moray. And we're going to have a little taste of their supersonic IPA. Now as is usual with my beer reviews I'll take you through a kind of brief history of the brewery quite an interesting one for these guys actually but as always if you are simply interested in the tasting of this beer then feel free to fast forward onto the latter part of the video and you will get straight there the brewery website's in the video description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I will do from them in the future and uh, there is also a link there that will show you the rest of the beers in my Scottish Beer Month series so anyway Brewmeister were founded back in 2012 by Lewis Shand and John McKenzie and they were financed initially by a £5,000 student loan and they're based in Moray in Keith, the, the town of Keith actually. So the first beer that they produced was the Armageddon which was marketed as a 65% beer and it was marketed quite strongly as the world's strongest beer. But what happened with, the, with their strong beers, and this is what they're quite famous for, there was the Snake Venom later on that was 67.5% and both of these beers claim to be the strongest beers in the world but what the brewery were doing was doing a lot of their work through freeze distilling and it was found that a lot of the early batches they were fine but the later batches that were coming out from the process were only coming out around 15% and there was quite a bit of independent testing went into them and there was a, a kind of backlash if you like because the brewery was selling the beer at marketed as the world's strongest beer obviously with these kind of 60 odd percent uh, ABVs and it was found that it was just wrong all the beer was coming out as 15% ABV which is obviously quite a bad marketing thing and a lot of the backlash actually seems to be surrounding the, the supposed attitude that the brewery took to that. A lot of people have written blogs and said that when they've gone to beer festivals and things like that the brewery, the people at the brewery haven't been too complimentary about their own beer and things like that which is kind of quite unusual and they haven't, a lot of people have said that they didn't deal with the kind of situation surrounding the strong beers either in such a good way but I'm not sure, I can't say I've experienced that myself at beer festivals and things like that from what I've heard their beer is actually meant to be very very nice and recently they've kind of uh they're supposed to have invested a lot in a new facility and things like that and they've actually kind of uh, redone a lot of the recipes and they're quite working quite hard to kind of rebuild their reputation if you like although the odd thing is that it's quite difficult to get their beer in Scotland these days most of their capacity if you like goes towards export and I'm not sure if that's kind of due to the kind of problems that they've had with reputation after this kind of thing occurred or whether it's just the fact that there's the market for it abroad <coughs> But it's an interesting kind of situation nonetheless, but I don't want to kind of tar the brewery with a bad brush if because uh, there's various interpretations of what's going on. I just want to kind of taste the beer and see how it is. And as I said to you, their, uh, their beer, from what I've heard, the beer that they are producing now is meant to be very, very good with all these nice... Uh, kind of refined recipes so let me just bring up the camera and I'll let you have a little look at the artwork on this one it's quite nicely done I think I do like the artwork that's on the Brewmeister beers but it looks really really nice it's quite well presented all of their beers from what I can tell on the website seem to have a kind of similar design to this it's just a different kind of colour scheme that goes on them and um, this guy says on the side here this beer is an exception to the bland with an industry full of corporate breweries and boring beers we like to do things differently this electrifying hop beer is made with a plethora of US hops through every stage of the brewing process our brewery in the heartland of Scottish whiskey fuses traditional ingredients with modern brewing techniques to bring you this truly epic beer and it's just got on the bottom it says uh, Brewmeister Brewery in Keith uh, in Keith and Moray and it says the Brewmeister way our beers are made with rock filtered water from our very own private well providing purity at its best Brewmeister adheres to the Reinheitsgebot sometimes called the Bavarian Purity Law in English this means we only use the best ingredients no nasties so give up your corporate laggers owned by conglomerates in sharp suits and join us on an exciting voyage of drinking edgy craft beers be a Brewmeister Quite nice little thing there. This guy is meant to be used by the 19th of July 2015. It's a plain bottle cap on this one. But um, let's get it out and get on with the taste now. I'm quite interested to try this beer because I've wanted to do a Brewmeister review for you for about a year or so now. But it's been difficult to track the beer down. I actually got this one from the Aldi Summer Beer Festival range that they were doing. So I did finally manage to get a hold of some of their beer. So hopefully I enjoy this one. Sugar up the last little bit and try and get it out. 
So this guy, I forgot to mention that to you, it's 5% on, uh, on the Richter scale, this one. It's an American style pale ale, as you probably guessed, or an IPA, however you want to describe it. But let's get this guy under the light and we can have a look at the colour here. So as you can see, it's poured a really nice kind of bright orangey amber colour. There's a, thing, a sort of half finger of a frothy white head on it. There's just a teeny tiny little bit of sediment in the bottom of the uh, of the beer there. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see it's completely opaque. There's no transparency to it at all. But it's, it's quite an attractive looking beer actually. And without even paying too much attention to the aroma, you do get an idea of the kind of freshness of this one. So let's give it a smell and see how we get on. Yeah, it's got a big, big fruity aroma. There's quite a lot of kind of grapefruit coming out of this one, actually. A nice kind of fresh grapefruit character, as I say. There's a little bit of a kind of sharper peachiness to it as well. Yeah, definitely peaches and grapefruit. It's quite juicy, actually. It's a very, very juicy aroma. But you can pick up the kind of bready malts. There's a little bit of toasted character and some kind of caramel in there, too. But there's a little bit of a kind of unusual element to the bready malts there too. It's almost as if it's a little bit spiced actually. But it's a main, mainly a nice big juicy aroma. And it smells very, very fresh as well. It's a really attractive smelling beer. So without further ado, let's get on and give this guy a taste. So this is my first review from Brewmeister. And I've heard their beer is very nice. So hopefully it lives up to that reputation. So here we go. Cheers. The weird thing with this one is actually, just on first impressions, with all the juiciness that's in the the kind of hop and the in the in the aroma there, it doesn't come out so much in the flavour actually. Yeah, this one's kind of coming out more. It's got a big kind of bready malt base that's got a bit of spice character in it. It's actually coming out a little bit more like a. An English pale ale than an American pale ale, if that makes sense. There's not a lot of fruit character to it. It does have a wee bit of a kind of bitter character. It's definitely got a bit of a spicy bread base on it, this one. Yeah, the fruit character isn't really coming out at all, I should say, actually. It's a big... It comes out with just, there's a teeny little bit of juiciness that comes out in in the start. It comes in with quite a wet mouthfeel and you've got just a little bit of that kind of grapefruit juicy character in there a little bit. Just a little bit of peach in there and, and maybe even some sort of grassy element to it. But the main thing that's lingering with this beer is the bread malt base. There's a little bit of caramel in there but mainly it's a quite a sp sort of spicy bready malt base. It doesn't fit the style that well actually. Well, actually now I've said that, once my mouth is kind of tuned to it a little bit. I would actually change what I said there. You have this kind of fruity juicy character that comes in at the start. It lingers a little bit on the front of the tongue. But you have to kind of let your mouth adjust to this one, I think. When I was taking it in, initially it's coming in as a big kind of bready, slightly spicy character that's coming out here. But as your mouth kind of adjusts to it, if you like, you start to get a little bit more of the juicy fruits. There's a bit of a kind of floral sort of piney raisin flavour in this one as well, I think, that kind of, that comes and just kind of lets itself be known around the edge of the tongue. I would say to you, maybe take a big gulp of this one first. Just take a, a fairly big gulp and let your mouth just kind of adjust to the taste and then do your sips and get used to the tasting, actually. But yeah, it's got a nice juicy character at the start. There's a little bit of a grapefruit in there, but none of the fruit flavours are quite are all that sharp, actually. It's a little bit juicy. Just a little bit of kind of peachy character coming out there, too. But there is a bit of an element of kind of grassy, aromatic -y hop that comes out here as well. In the middle of the mouth, you're getting that kind of... You're just getting a sort of blanket of a nice kind of bready character lying over there and some spiciness that just goes right up the middle of the tongue. There's a wee bit of sort of caramel or biscuity sweetness there as well. But yeah, 
It's got quite an interesting one, this. It almost, it's not made with some of the, the more punchy hops, I think, from the US. It's not like a Cascade hop or anything that's in that, where you get quite a kind of a punchy fruit character, if you like. It's more of a, it's more an IPA that seems to be made of the sort of complexing hops, if that makes sense. Nothing is all that punchy in this one. But it's a nice kind of blend of flavours, this one. It's quite a sessionable IPA, actually, I should say that. Yeah. It's got a good bit of kind of floral and aromatic -y character, like I say. But it's quite an interesting one. It's almost... It maybe needs just a little bit of a more kind of sharp fruitiness to it, but overall it's quite a nice and a kind of, it has a little bit of complexity in the flavour, so if you do get the chance to try it, you know, give it a little chance. Let your mouth adjust to it and then uh, try and pick out all the individual flavours. It's, it's fairly nice actually, it's quite a nice sessionable IPA as I say. The mouthfeel I would say is mid-bodied, kind of moderate carbonation in there as well. It's a little bit prickly which helps bring out some of the juicy character. But I mean overall, it's got a slightly oily mouthfeel, a good bit of bitter character actually coming out too, a kind of aromatic -y freshness, and it's slightly dry in the mouth as well, and that particularly grows in the aftertaste where you get the aromatic flavours kind of coming out. But overall I would say, it's a kind of interesting IPA this one, as I say, it's more a kind of complex hop, more of a complex hop uh, IPA rather than a quite punchy hop if that makes sense. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review nonetheless. If you do enjoy a nice sessionable IPA give this guy a chance. I'd quite like to try some of the other beers from Brewmeister. I've heard good things about their, uh, their Dunkel beer and the Blonde beer so hopefully I can review those for you in the near future. This one's been quite an interesting one to try. But um, as I say, check out the Brewmeister Brewery, give their beers a chance and see what you think. Let me know in the comment section below your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it before. I hope you've enjoyed this beer review and I will be back soon with the next one in the series. Cheers.